If you watch my channel, you know I was a big fan of the Galaxy Note 7 last year. When they released it, I was really hyped on it and I gave it a very good review. And unfortunately, it had to be recalled due to its battery exploding issues. And Samsung has been hard at work ever since taking extra security measures for safety and has been trying to push the envelope in its new premium flagship phone, the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Well, I have it right here. It's the Galaxy S8 Plus from Samsung. Hi, my name's Andrew, and this is the first look at the Galaxy S8 Plus. Let's see if this is the new premium smartphone we've all been waiting for. There is no doubt that Samsung's feeling the pressure after last year's Samsung Note 7 recall disaster. And now they have the new flagship out, the S8 and S8 Plus. Not only is it safer, but can they push the envelope? Let's find out. This is the AMD Tech first look at the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. The unit I purchased was $850, it's the Verizon version, but it works on all major carriers in the US and there's also an international variant as well. There are two variants of the S8 Plus, an international version which has the Exynos 8895 CPU and then the US version which I have here has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. Now they come with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of onboard storage which is expandable via the micro SD card slot that takes up to 256GB cards. But the star of this show has to be the 6.2 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 2960 by 1440. That's 529 pixels per inch and it has a peak brightness of over a thousand nits, making this one of the best screens to read outdoors ever to be produced. This is one of the best displays I've ever seen. It's got virtually no bezels and it has those edges that made the S7 Edge so popular and it's even more refined with this iteration. And just like the Galaxy Tab S3, the premium tablet I just reviewed, this also supports HDR content or high dynamic range content, which really pushes the envelope in terms of display technology. The Galaxy S8 Plus weighs 173 grams or 6.1 ounces. It's very thin, it's very light, and it's very stunning looking with its virtually bezel-less design. This is a glass and metal design that's covered in Gorilla Glass 5 and has metal edges. The S8 and S8 Plus are water and dust resistant with an IP68 rating. Now you can submerge this in water up to 1.5 meters up to 30 minutes. Now as far as ports are concerned, here's what you get. On the top of the device you have your SIM tray and you also have your micro SD card slot which holds up to 256 gigabyte cards. And on the bottom of the device you have your mono speaker, a much improved mono speaker over the S7 and S7 Edge. We'll talk more about that in the full review and in the sound section later in this video. And of course this charges via the USB Type-C, a nice welcome improvement. And you have your 3.5mm headphone jack, something the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus doesn't have. On the left side of the device you have your volume rocker up and down and below that is a dedicated button for Samsung's new virtual assistant, Bixby. We'll talk more about that in the final review, but just to let you know, I think it's a little bit half-baked on launch. Hopefully it'll get better through future updates and future revisions. And on the right side of the device is your power button. Gone is the physical home button that we had in previous iterations. Now it's replaced with a virtual home button along with other customizable buttons, something you couldn't do in the past. Now you can put the back button where you like it. In a very controversial move, Samsung moved the fingerprint sensor to the back of the device next to the camera and if you're right-handed it may be an issue and there has been some complaints in the media and in the reviews that I've seen so far about its placement. Now being left-handed this wasn't much of an issue for me and I've been using the iris scanner and facial recognition more than the fingerprint scanner so again this hasn't been an issue for me. We'll talk more about this in the full review coming very soon.
Now, in addition to the fingerprint scanner as a way to log into the device, you also have facial recognition and iris scanning as well. So you've got multiple ways to log into the device. We'll get into that more in a full in-depth review in our full review coming very soon. On the front of the device is an 8 megapixel shooter. It's f1.7 and it has smart autofocus for taking selfies and the like. So this is the front facing camera on the Galaxy S8 Plus. It is a 8 megapixel shooter, f1.7. The back is also f1.7, a 12 megapixel shooter. I will be testing both of these in the full review. I just want to give you a sample of the front facing webcam. And this can do selfies obviously, as well as take photos. On the back of the device, you get your 12 megapixel shooter. It's f1.7, 26 millimeter equivalent, and it has phase detection, autofocus, optical image stabilization, LED flash, and it has auto HDR. And it shoots 4K video at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60 frames per second. The S8 and S8 Plus have a mono speaker located on the bottom. Now, it is much improved over the S7 and the S7 Edge, but I still wish it did have stereo sound. But nonetheless, for a mono speaker, this is certainly an improvement over past iterations. Not to be outdone by Apple, Samsung recently released the Samsung Tab S3, a high-end premium tablet to compete with the likes of the iPad Pro. Let's see if they have a winner on their hands. Powering this bad boy is a Snapdragon 820 with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. Now it is the S8 and S8 Plus is also the first device to sport Bluetooth 5.0 and the big improvements in 5.0 is range and the fact that you can connect multiple devices at the same time. For example, if you're on an airplane and you want to connect Bluetooth headphones, multiple Bluetooth headphones with you and your partner, there's no problem in doing that. The S8 and S8 Plus are the first devices to support DeX. It's a dock that you can put on your desk that can connect a monitor or a mouse to, much like in the vein of Continuum that Microsoft was recently touting. I have one on order. It should be shipping very soon. And once I do, I'll do a special video on the DeX and how it works. And I'll also talk about it in the full review once I do have it. Performance has been very snappy in my initial impressions of this device and it's running Android 7.0 Nougat which is good to see. Hopefully Samsung will be better in terms of updates but I'm not holding my breath in terms of that. But as far as TouchWiz or whatever the skin that, that Samsung is calling it these days, it's a lot better than in previous iterations. It's not as overly overt in your face, it's a little less bloatware and it's a little less over the top and a little less cartoonish in my opinion. But I think they did a good job in terms of their own skin. It's a lot better than previous iterations, that's for sure. We'll talk more about performance and the OS in the full review coming very soon. So what do you think about the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus? Do you think it checks all the boxes you'd want in a premium smartphone? I think it does, although I think it's very expensive, but I think we've come to expect that from Samsung and from Apple and from Google for that matter at this point. You're gonna pay a hefty price for these premium smartphones. But what you get with this device is a very premium high-end Super AMOLED display that I think it's worth the money just for that alone. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's got the inky blacks, the very vibrant colors that we've come to expect. The fact that it can show high dynamic range content is even better. I like the performance so far. The limited use that I've had with it, it seems snappy. And unlike uh, years past with a TouchWiz, this skin isn't so bad. It's a little bit more tame. It's a little bit more fluid than we're also used to for out of Samsung, which is known for doing all the sorts of bloatware and overloading their skins with unnecessary features that nobody really uses. But I think they've hit a home run here. But again, I don't want to be too premature on this. Let me do my benchmarks. Let me run it through all my testing that I normally do. I'll test that 3,500 milliampere battery, see how the battery life does. That's very important. 
to all of us, as I know. And we'll test the performance. We'll get all the benchmarks, the Geekbench, the Intutu. We'll see how it games. We'll see how it does in everyday use. So stay tuned for the full review coming very soon. So I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Is there anything in particular with this device that you want me to uh, review? I will check out the cameras and all everything associated with the device, especially the cameras. So stay tuned for the full review. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter and our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.